Hello everybody, you already know who's this, and for those of you who don't, I'm Dead Pines. I'm here to go ahead and tell you how to do the Prophecy Dungeon as fast as humanly possible. Let's go! This first encounter teaches you the major mechanic for the entire dungeon. In the first area, there's a door you'll need to open. There's a light and dark pillar at the end of the hall. You'll need to go ahead and cleanse their respective moats in these pillars to open the door. To get either of these moats, you'll need to kill the knights that spawn on the right side of the room. And to get either a moat of light or a moat of dark, you'll need to stand either the light or the dark to make that moat. You'll be able to tell what moat you'll make by the outline around your screen. You'll need five of the small moats to make a big moat. And once you've obtained this big moat, run to the respective pillar and use your shoot button to cleanse it. Rinse and repeat until you get to the first boss. Welcome to the first boss of the dungeon, the Phalanx Echoes. The main mechanic of this encounter is the exact same as the previous encounter, and this time every time you cleanse or bank a moat, the light and dark areas will shift. So go ahead and plan out accordingly. Hide behind cover and grab your moats and bank them where they need to go. Once you've banked all the moats, it's time for DPS. I personally recommend using the Fallen Guillotine, because halfway through damage phase, goblins will spawn, and they'll immediately put an overshield on the boss. But with the guillotine's intrinsic part, the sword's attacks will bypass shields a little bit, more than enough to kill the boss. If you don't have the guillotine, I can also recommend using Mountaintop, Anarchy, Ikelos, First and Last Out, Acrius, or Sleeper. If you don't want phase the boss, you'll just have to grab more moats. Rinse and repeat until the boss is dead. Stand in the swirly sand pit to go to the next encounter. Welcome to the Wasteland. This is more of a transitional area. To get to the next area, you'll need to destroy sets of blights. There are three places that the blights will spawn, and at each location there will be three individual blights you'll need to destroy. Use whatever you can to destroy them. Once you've destroyed all three blights, go ahead and walk towards the echo. The echo will fly towards the next set of blights. Once you've cleared all three checkpoints, you'll get a message on the bottom left hand corner of your screen saying that the way is open. Just start driving towards the right side of the entire arena from where you came in to get to the next encounter. Welcome to the Hexahedron, or the Cube. You'll still be using the main mechanic from all the previous encounters in here, but in order to get the knights to spawn, you'll need to kill snipers. But this time, in order to find out what moats you'll need, you'll need to look for the echo around the room. Whatever pillar is underneath the echo, you'll need to grab those moats. And if the echo's on the on the very top of the entire arena, that means you can use either light or dark. It doesn't matter. But you'll still need to cleanse them at their respective pillars. Once you've cleansed the moat, step in the light in the center of the room. Rinse and repeat until you get to the boss. There's nothing inherently special about these bosses. Just use whatever you want to kill them as fast as you can. Once you've killed them, Jump out the way you came in, and follow this way to go to the next encounter. Welcome to Rainbow Road. This is still another transitional area. There'll be snipers and other ads along the way. If you have a sniper or anything long range, I highly suggest using them to take out snipers. Continuing. Welcome to the boss fight, Cal Echo. This encounter still uses the major mechanic of the entire dungeon. Create moats and bank them where they need to go. Wherever the pillars are, the echo of the boss will also be there. And not only will ads also try to kill you, the boss will be taking shots at you as well. So just go from cover to cover while creating the moats and survive. Every time you bank a moat, an ogre will spawn. Use whatever you can to take care of this ogre. Once you've banked all three, step in the middle to start the boss's DPS. The boss's DPS arena is one long room with many floating platforms on it, with hog goblins that spawn. 
The boss will also be teleporting towards the end of the room. What you'll need to do is do as much damage to the boss while also taking care of hobgoblins. The boss will occasionally throw a Taken Blight at you. The Blight will not only do a tremendous amount of damage, it will also teleport you to the back of the room. Boss Arena also has its own mechanic, Dark Entropy. You can't be too far away from the boss. This boss will have an aura that you can see on the ground. You'll need to be inside this aura to make sure you don't get Dark Entropy. If this reaches times 10, you'll die, so don't be too far away. If you don't one face the boss, you'll need to start all over again and jump down in the sand pit and return to the previous room. But you don't need to jump down the sand pit immediately. You can just wait in the boss's room to get all your abilities back. Rinse and repeat until the boss is dead. If you somehow vibe with these kind of guys, please leave a like. And hell, why not subscribe to the channel? It inspires me to make more. And if you want me to go ahead and cover something specifically, why not leave a comment? I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace and have a good day. Bye.